Welcome to day one of spooky season. Remember when I almost suffocated myself by making a face cast of my face? Well, aside from it just being a helpful thing to have around, the main reason I made it was actually for this. I started off by adding a plasticine clay to the eyes and mouth area to create some actual air room, so once I have the mask on, I can actually breathe and open my eyes freely. I then added Vaseline onto the face itself, but if you have any sort of mold release, you can use that too. To get the basic shape down, I rolled out some air dry clay. The color does not matter. I placed it over top. Eventually, this is not even going to be part of the mask at all. But for now, when I was making this, I thought it would be, and it was still helpful in the process. If you can add something around the edges to make it less um, pointy to your face, definitely go for it. I added the clay over top and used my hands to shape it around my face, my casting of my face at least, alongside using a clay tool to indicate early on where I would want the elastic to go to contain it, again, to my face. <laughs> I also know that I want one of my eyes to completely show through. Being sure to next cut out the eye hole. Honestly, way too big, but it's better to start off bigger as this does get built onto a lot. And I know it might seem weird, at least that I added this to both eyes when I was going to take off one eye anyways, but keeping this here and having this approximate depth of each other makes it so that it's going to dry as if this eye hole doesn't exist. And in the end, we kind of want to make it look like the eye hole don't exist anyways, so eyes hole, eye holes, eye holes. <sighs> Because this clay doesn't dry, and this clay does, eventually we'll be able to take this one off. And now we wait. Alright, there are a lot of cracks, but that is to be expected with such a thin layer. However, it doesn't matter because we're going to be putting like cast over it pretty much. It's just a matter of if we can get this off. Yes, it did start cracking, which is to be expected, but I did eventually just do a full removal of it. But I digress. I removed this completely from the face, basically just to prove to myself that I could. <laughs> we are getting there. Ooh, ooh. Come on. Come on. We're so close. Come on. <gasps> I mean, it worked, but at what cost, you know? Okay. So I know it kind of seems um, counterproductive at this point, but now that I know that it can come off, um, I'm going to put it back on. And this is so that I can actually put the casting bandages on to actually make it look like a mask. Besides like this, because this is not stable enough to go onto your face or anybody's face, specifically mine, because that's who it's going on. I'm keeping all the clay pieces on underneath to, again, keep that stability. Placed it back on for added support as this next layer will be the heaviest, which is the plaster gauze. You can get this off of Amazon or at your local pharmacy. It's the stuff they use with like hard casts for your hands and arms and whatnot. I cut strips of it first, placed them into a bowl of water, wrung out the excess just with my fingers, and then placed them on. I'm going to get all of it to start going this way once I've got like a clear and decisive layer while using my fingers to actually like press them firmly onto the face to get it to stick. This is where you'll notice I close up the eye area a little bit. Okay, this really looks weird because I haven't added the final portions to it, but I think I'm going to do that after this layer dries down just to see how much I can actually add to it. I let that dry overnight and then just continued back with some regular gauze. This one is just one that has like a sticky side to it. It's basically just a bandage. I got this from the dollar store. I didn't really like the look of the plaster gauze because it still had like the texture to it. Like not the good texture, but like the almost trypophobia texture. But I needed the reinforcement. This gauze gives a much smoother edge, which will seem counterproductive in just a little bit, but... <laughs> Once I had a full layer of the smooth gauze over this, I then started shaping it, folding it together to make lines in the cloth, adding texture. One of my favorite things to add to a piece. I 
am almost positive I used up all of this for this project. Okay. And then I came in with a paper mache mixture, just with a disposable sponge to put over the top to add even more reinforcement, but also just to like seal it and get it ready for the paint job. Oh my god. Oh my god. For the paint job itself, I am keeping a bowl of water off to the side to dilute any paints that I want to dilute, and basically just let them make their way into the newly formed creases. Alongside the bowl of water though, I'm using a dark brown- And then mixing the two for around the eye area, kind of cascading out. I like the way that this looks, so I added quite a bit more. Water that the hell down. <laughs> once that was completely dry, once again, I dry brushed some white over the peaks, the mountains, if you will. Again, once that was dry, to seal everything in, I added a matte spray paint top coat. This is where the clay ended up being removed from the project, as it basically served its purpose, so it was fine. All in one foul swoop. That's almost creepy in itself. Then finally it was time to add the elastic, but I needed to figure out where first. I initially made holes in the clay with the clay tool just to kind of get like the gist of where I wanted it, but now I had a much harder surface to get through. I made two small holes in each side of the mask. When I drilled the two holes, I made them a couple inches apart from each other. This was so I would be able to know where to grind, basically between the holes. As this wasn't the safest way to do it, I definitely couldn't kind of a safer way, do as I say, not as I do. I was barely applying pressure to it, turning it over to see exactly when the piece started actually getting through all the layers, which didn't take too long. I then added the elastic to both sides, one piece each, which I hand sewed to each side, and then hand sewed a clip into the back so I could kind of adjust it a little bit. With the mask being done, it was time to move on to the dress and hat. I didn't want to actually dye this piece, just basically like dirty it up a little bit, so I simply used coffee to age it. I added a few scoops of used coffee grounds into boiling water and let it simmer for a few minutes. Then added the hat. And finally the dress into the mix. Just do be aware that the color isn't going to be the same as when you take it out versus wring it out. It's going to be a little bit darker when you take it out of whatever dye bath it's in, whether it's coffee or actual dye. You may recognize this costume from my Blink-182 nurse costume. I didn't care too much to fully wash this out as if like waiting for the water to run clear like you're supposed to because it's coffee. It's a natural dye and if I smell like coffee after wearing this, I won't be angry, you know? Anyways, I did let this drip dry in. and the final step to this baby is adding it onto my craft table to add fake blood, which is just a mixture of fabric medium mixed with acrylic paint. Slapping that on, literally, all over the back, front, and hat. Definitely waiting for each layer to dry before I flipped it. What's 
As for the last big piece of the costume, I actually did kind of have doubts about these tights actually working, but they were absolutely marvelous. I started them out by putting my mannequin on my craft table, being sure to remove the removable heels and saran wrapping the entire bottom as to make sure that the paint that I'm about to use does not stick to the mannequin and said maybe sticks to the passograph. Please accept this as my self-taped addition for Dexter if a third rendition comes along. Okay. I've never seen this method done, although I'm sure it has been, so I had nothing really to go off of. So every precaution I could think of was taken. Then I added the pantyhose on. Although her and I are not the same height, I thought this would be easier than putting the pantyhose on myself and waiting for all the fabric glue to dry down. I did use multiple references photos, but all of the nurses do have different veining, so I also just went for it using a puffy blue paint. and a red one that I actually painted in mostly because I knew I would be adding blue paint over top of it for the most part. I went between using the reference photos, as I said, to actually googling veining to see how I should make it as realistic as possible. When I tell you that this took days, <laughs> man oh man, <laughs> good thing I was using a mannequin.
comes out. Reminds me of being in high school when all the guys would wear <laughs> their pants down here when their butt actually ended there. Finally, I removed the pantyhose, which was a process. Luckily, I had plastic wrap around her, so nothing actually stuck to her body. But you can definitely hear it come off and stick to the plastic wrap a little bit.
Finally, despite having so much done to this costume, I wanted to add more. I got these heels secondhand so it wasn't an issue painting them as I specifically bought them secondhand for this project, but I simply sanded down the edges just a little bit to better help the resin paint stick. And as the name would suggest, I mixed a little bit of red, the same red that I actually had from painting the dress, so technically it also had some fabric medium in it, but I digress. I mixed that in with a little bit of resin and painted it around the edges and just let it drip down naturally. And away we go. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys. Happy Halloween. It's pretty good. <laughs> Ready? Mm -hmm. Ready? Took me a second to like this. I turned it on and then I freaked out because it was working and I turned it off and I tried to turn it on again and it didn't work. Look at this. Oh my god. <laughs>